So it's not a Jeep, but I've got a new project for the fall, probably into the winter. I picked up this 1958 Ford wagon. It's actually a uh, two-door station wagon. A customer of mine in the next town had it in his garage probably since 1986. It hasn't run. Um, he moved this way about 1976 from the West Coast. Brought this car with him. The car that he bought probably in 67 and did some Modifications to it back then. Moved out here, drove it around maybe 14,000 miles total since he's owned it and parked it in his garage in 1986 and it hasn't moved since. Well, until the other day when we went over there with a wrecker and towed it out of there. I have some pictures I'll put up of that. But I looked at this car about a year and a half to two years ago because the, uh, the owner didn't feel he had the time or the space or the tools to get it running again. But it's different. I had never seen one of these ranch wagons um, in a two-door version. I know they existed, but never saw one. This one's a pretty good example from the West Coast with uh, no rust at all. Maybe a, a tiny bit starting on the eyebrow right there. That's about the only spot of rust in the car. Uh, but I had never never seen one before and to find something like this and in, in this condition was, was pretty fortunate uh, not very valuable at all um, pretty rare but not very desirable never caught on like the Chevy Nomads uh, this car however did have the original V8 pulled in the late 60s and a uh, Thunderbird 390 was rebuilt and put in its place. Uh, the three on the tree transmission was replaced with a, a Borg Warner top loader four speed on the floor at that time. And that transmission at the time when the engine was rebuilt was purchased brand new. So the drivetrain essentially has 14,000 miles on it. The interior was done in that diamond shape, tuck and roll, black vinyl, real heavy quality vinyl. Um, late 60s, early 70s as well. And again, very few miles since that was done and the car was stored inside. So it is like the day it was put on. It's, uh, it's perfect. A couple of late 60s hot rod touches with the drilled out window cranks and door handles. Got the wood rim steering wheel and the uh, wood veneer dash that was done by the previous owner back in the late 60s. Kind of unique. In the back again with the diamond interior upholstery some old coaxial speakers put in there and that diamond theme was taken right back to the, the cargo area and it's got a uh, perfect headliner in it as well all black so the interior other than a thorough cleaning doesn't need anything I think it's a pretty cool 70s or late 60s hot rod theme to this car um, the color is not original this uh, robin's egg type blue was applied by the previous owner again back in the late 60s. Um, some of the trim was stripped and not put back on. For example, there's no Ford emblems anywhere or ranch wagon emblems anywhere in the car. Um, it did have a gold insert for the side trim, that stainless spear going down the side. Uh, I have yet to see it, but the customer does have it. Maybe not with this color, but if the car was ever brought back to its original white paint, that gold insert for that spear would be, uh, would be perfect. Sliding rear windows.
and there's the back end of it too. Get kind of an Edsel type tail light on these. I wasn't thrilled about the look of the tail lights, but uh, that's the way the 58s came. It's definitely different. Now uh, the chrome on this car, I imagine, could be cleaned up pretty well. It's still got 40 years of dust on it. I want to take a video before I hit it with a sponge and washed it up. But the um, back hatch opens. You release it with the handle. It pops up like this. It stays up on its own like that. So it's got pretty good cargo area in there and that, that seat does fold down. It's going to require a nice cleanup. Otherwise, pretty cool. This tailgate here, I think it's locked. It was open the other day. The owner had it open, but I think he locked it with the key. I'll have to go with the key. Check that out. But condition-wise, the car is a pretty cool garage find. I don't think there's much, if any, filler at all. The uh, homeowner paint job isn't great, but good enough for now. And uh, I just have to get it running. So under the hood here, and it's a front hedge hood like all the old Fords. It's got the 390 sitting there. No air cleaner. Can't imagine the carburetor is any good after all this time. Um, but it does have the uh, vintage finned aluminum valve covers, which are pretty cool. Uh, stock manifolds, headers for this for this fitment are considered a nightmare because of the uh, the proximity to the frame. There's not a whole lot of room there by the control arm. Uh, the steering shaft is always an issue, uh, especially with the manual transmission. The clutch linkage is always an issue. So I'll probably click keep the stock exhaust manifolds. It's not going to be a, a race car, but with 14,000 miles on it, if I get these um, cylinder plugs out and get some oil in there, let it sit for a while and crank it over by hand, hopefully the engine moves and, um, and get it running without having any issues. But the radiator, pretty tired. We'll probably get an aluminum radiator in place of that. Maybe an electric fan, maybe keep the mechanical one, I'm not sure. But this week we'll get this engine running anyways, make sure it's good. And if it is, then I can plan on what to do with it. Definitely going to take the uh, red-orange paint off of there and repaint it black like it should be. And maybe get a manifold cam and carburetor kit from Edelbrock. Um, get that power package. Not sure what's in there, but I think it's mostly stock from what the previous owner told me. So that'll be the plan for the motor. The um, the brakes, that single stage master cylinder and four wheel drum. No, thank you. Let's see what's available for a disc brake kit for the front. Get a proportioning valve and a two stage master cylinder and upgrade the brakes. The lines underneath are all perfect, so I'll look at the brake hoses, replacing those, and getting some uh, disc brakes on the front. Now these 14 inch vintage mag wheels is pretty cool looking on this car, but they're going to have to go. They won't work with disc brakes, and to find a, a 14 inch tire, 60 series tire to fit them. I'm sure they're out there, but I'm going to upgrade to at least 15 inch, maybe 16s. But stick with the vintage 60s style mag. And the steering. No power steering pump. No power steering in this guy. So probably a kit. They make a nice kit. Uh, Unisteer, I believe makes a power rack and pinion kit that's a bolt-on. Uh, it's got some old linkage, the idler arm and everything on this looks so undersized for the application. 
so weak. So probably just go with the, um, the power steering rack and pinion conversion. Make this thing turn and, and stop a little bit better. And because uh, it is going to be a driver. The rear axle, it's on the lift partially now, but the rear is all jacked up. The, uh, back in the 60s, the axle was taken out. The spring perches were moved from the top, uh, from the bottom of the axle to the top of the axle, and the axle was relocated under, under the springs. So that probably netted three inch lift and back. Um, I'm not sure what kind of stance we're going to go with, but probably give it a stock height in the rear and maybe a two inch drop in the front to get it lower, upgrade some of the suspension components, try to make it handle a little bit better, um, but still keep that nose down attitude to it. So before I washed it, like I said, I wanted to get a video of the, uh, the car. Like I said, it still has 40 years worth of dust on it. And uh, this chrome is going to clean up pretty well, I think. I don't think I'll be needing to replace any of the chrome. And another thing, the, the grill bar with the emblem on it um, was deleted by the previous owner as well doing some research on these cars. That looks like a popular modification for the people who hot rodded these full-size Fords. And I like the look this way. I don't think the, the original uh, grill bar is around, but that's no problem. We'll clean this one up and see how it looks, but I definitely like the look without the grill bar on the emblem. So that's a new project. Again, it's not a Jeep, but I think it's pretty cool get this thing cleaned up, get it running, and then uh, start making some modifications to it, get it on the road. Well, with the 58 all cleaned up, it looks pretty good. The paint has a couple imperfections, but nothing major. Didn't find any more rust. Uh, the chrome came pretty clean. I think a good chrome polish would bring that back to more than acceptable condition. I uh, used the Castrol Super Clean in the engine bay and on the engine. Let it all soak in and uh, cleaned it up. Everything cleaned up really nice. Hood latch doesn't work. But that's not a big deal. Get that working. I think with a coat of wax, this must be a lacquer paint. Give it a compound and a wax, it'll come back nice. A little bit of a door gasket issue there, but no problem. All these parts should be readily available if I need to, need to find them. So we'll get the, get the motor running this week. And as long as it cranks and has good compression, we'll get into the motor a little bit. Upgrade the fuel system, possibly an intake cam, definitely carburetor. Might even think of dual quads on this with the big oval air cleaner. Aluminum radiator, either a new distributor or a Petronics um, insert to replace the, the condenser and points. Let's we'll see how this guy runs. So hopefully next time we'll get this engine fired.